Hey guys, last time in 1.6 we talked about a concept of being continuous, right? So there are actually like three requirements. The first one is that the function has to be defined as c. The second requirement is that the limit of f of x when x approaches to c has to exist. And the last condition, the last requirement is that um, f of c has to be equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches to c, okay? So make sure you have to be aware of all three conditions. So if one of the three conditions fails, no matter if it's the first one or the second one or the last one, your function will not be continuous at C, okay? And then we also talk about like when we have like continuity in the open and closed interval. In the open interval, we don't have to consider too much about the endpoints, but in the closed interval, we have to consider about the two endpoints in there. So A in there would be like the starting point and B in there would have to be like the ending point. So you have to check the continuity at A and at B. And also like extra stuff like what uh, you see, see what you saw already in my examples. So say if I give you a function, say you know like f equals to um, like two pieces, like the first one. I'm not. I'm. I don't know. I'm just gonna like make up things. Okay. Wait. X plus one and the other one is like a cube minus two or whatever you want to call it. Um, the first condition. I don't know. It could be something like x. I don't know, like different than 4, and then the second one is like x equal to 4, okay? So even though the 4 in here is not like one of the endpoints in there, because the endpoint here is actually negative infinity and positive infinity, right? Like it doesn't mention other numbers in this example. But then you also have to check out the limit of x, of f of x at 4. Why is that so? Because 4 in here is the point where the condition actually calculate breaks down, all right? So this is like the extra point um, besides the, lip, the besides the endpoints that you also have to check out for continuity, okay? So for today, let's talk about 2.1 differentiation, new chapter. So 2.2, let's talk about the derivative and the slope of the graph, okay? So a little bit of review. Calculus is a branch of mathematics, I mean mathematics, that studies rates of change of functions in this course, we will learn the we will learn that the rates of change may have applications in real life, right? Like everything we learn in math, they all have like applications in real life. In one point three, like long time ago already, in probably like week two, we learned how the slope of a line indicates the rate. If you remember, we have like two things, right? Either the rate or the ratio. Um, so the rate in here at which the line rise or falls. For a line, this rate or slope, you want to refer it to m, is the same at every point on the line, okay? So for the line for a linear equation, the rate or the slope is pretty much the same at every point on the line. For graphs of other, for gra for graphs other than lines, like, you know, like parabola or, you know, like cubic function or absolute value function, whatever, like graphs, that's not a, a line, the rate at which the graph rise or falls changes from point to point, okay? So then I give you like the three examples in here. The first one, as you can see, I give you like a parabola that looks like this. Let me not like redraw it because it looks ugly. So at the first point here, right? Like we have this point here, the slope of it is like pretty much like stacked like this. It's like a straight line. So it's gonna look like this. Okay, that's why it's like positive, right? Because the slope in here is rising and it's stiff, right? right? Like it's almost vertical. That's why I'm gonna think, I'm gonna assume that it's, it's equal to four, okay? And in here, if you wonder, I'm just making up numbers, okay? So you don't have to worry about too much about like, how do I know which one is four or two or like zero or negative 2.3. I'm just approximating them based on my experience. But I can assure you, you don't have to do the same thing on the test or in the quiz, okay? And at point two in here, as you can see, this is the slope, right? So the line is like a little bit like bending like down horizontally. That's why I will say it's either to like either two or three, or I don't know, like somewhere between two and three. It's more, you know, like horizontal compared to the first uh, slope up like point one. And then for the next point at point three, this one is like flat, right? So we all know whenever we, whenever we have a horizontal line, its slope is zero because it doesn't rise. Okay, it just keep running, but it doesn't rise any further. 
okay and then the last one at the point four in here we're gonna have this line here that right and this one is negative because it's falling right like your line here is falling from left to right and again I'm just approximately them so I put like negative 2.3 but then again you don't have to like know exactly how to find just by looking at the picture okay so as you can see for one graph of a parabola at different points we have different slopes right so it's not the same thing every point is just like what we have for our line okay so if you want to know more about like more graphs in there again we have parabola and this point the slope in here is zero because we have like a horizontal tangent line for the second picture we have um, like a curve in here i'm not sure what function it is anymore but then technically we have a tangent line and if, as you can tell the slope in here it must be a positive number right because it's rising right while for the last one we have like a curve in here and then this slope is falling right so whatever number that is but i'm pretty sure it's a negative number okay so to determine the rate at which the graph rise or falls at a single point you can find the slope of the tangent line of the point i mean at the point in simple terms the tangent line the graph of a function f at the point p equals to x1 x2 i mean x1 y1 this one the coordinate of point p it's the line that best approximates the graph at that point. So essentially all this work it tells you that, well, you need to find a tangent line at the point, okay? And then let's talk about the first objective of the day. Okay, this has a lot, a lot of like, you know, like um, write, um, writing in there. It has a lot of words. I'm not gonna read them all from word to word, but uh, let's go through them, at least some of them. Okay, I'm going to go fast with this one because the tension line approximates the graph at the point. The, the problem of finding the slope of a graph at a point becomes one of finding the slope at the tension uh, line at a point, right? So technically, how can we find a slope in here? Like, that's the question that we are looking for the answers in here. Okay, and how can we do that? Well, um, from geometry, we know that a line is tension to a circle. If the line intersects a circle at only one point, okay, but this is not like for all cases. This is only this only applies for the circle, okay. Tension lines who are non-circular graph, however, can intersect the graph more than one point, okay. So just to confirm in here, just because it intersects the graph more than one point, it doesn't mean that it don't. It's not the tension line, okay. It's only applicable for like a circle to be intersect at one point for other like non-circular graphs. They are not like applicable okay so assume that okay so this is my example okay i'm not gonna do it in like two columns for like the space but then just a heads up this is what you have to do and for my problem i did it in here so this is like you know like usually i put it on the left hand side but here it is so assume that this is the, assume this is the graph of macy stock market where X represents the time in months and Y represents the market price of Macy during COVID-19. So we all can predict that the, the price in here will not be like growing super fast anymore under COVID, right? Uh, know that the blue line is the tangent at the blue point P and the uh, coordinate of the point P in here is one and one third. Or uh, if you want to uh, use decimal numbers, you can do like one and I don't know, this is like 0 0.33 or just 0 0.3 if you want to stop there but this blue line also hits the graph again at the pink point Q and a coordinate of it if you want to use a decimal version it is like you know like negative 2 and let me use my calculator to calculate it out the other one is like negative 2.7 or like negative 2.67 okay so we have um, the tangent line intersect the red curve two times, right? Like one at the pink point and the other time at the blue point. So this is what I meant by, you know, if you have a non-circular graph, it the tangent line can intersect the graph more than one point, okay? So this is what it is. And then, because we have like two points already, this one and this one, we can easily compute a slope, right? We have the formula for the slope, and if you don't remember it, let me give you it again. So we kind of call them like x1, y1, comma, in between x2, y2, comma, right? And then we're going to have y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, okay? 
We put we're gonna plug all the numbers in there and then you use a calculator and then you get the slope equals to one. Okay? So this is major, right? Like what does it mean? What the like what do what are we doing here, right? So the slope in here it tells us that the stock price of Macy in February is one dollar higher in January. Well, you're gonna ask me how do I know that's in February, right? Or like even in January, right? And I'm gonna tell you that the tension in here, we doing it is at the point. Well, because the tension line here is at the blue point, right? And one here is for January. That's how I know. Like in the next month in February, compared to the first month January, it is one dollar higher. Okay. In the test, I might ask you to inter interpret like the meaning of the slope. So just beware for this one. Um, again, it's positive. That means it's higher, right? Uh, if you were to have like a negative one in here, it means it's gonna be like lower. So it means that the top, the stock price of Macy in February will be one dollar like lower or like cheaper compared to it in in January. Okay. And again, this is like green star for your example. Okay. And I know that I didn't like pick out any two points for you as I did in my example of you know like using the pink point and the blue point. But if you want to, you can use these two point, you know, like nine and two thousand, and probably this one twelve and then two twenty five hundred. Those are like the two nice points that um, you might consider using it. And then you get the slope from there, and then you can interpret the slope from there. Okay, interpret. Now let's talk about the next page, slope and the limit process. To approximate the slope of a tension line more precisely, we will we will make okay grandma sorry for this we will make use of a second line through the point of tension c and a second point on the graph okay so again we're gonna have two points right like one blue point and one pink point and from there we're gonna get the slope and why do we call it a second line well um okay so just imagine like if we're gonna have like this this graph in here okay at this point here the tension line only have, like hits the graph um, like touching the graph at the point okay but then for second line okay I'm trying to like draw the same line but then this is not possible okay this is close enough as the same curve right so second line it can touch the graph more than once so it would be something like this this is like second line and this is like tension line so tension just once Second twice, okay? Second for second, right? And then second is like two, okay? So that's like my way to remember it, but if you don't want to remember it that, that way, that's cool, okay? So again, we're gonna use a slow formula right here. That is y2 minus y1 uh, over x2 minus x1. And if you simplify it, you're gonna get this right here. And this is called the difference quotient. So if any of you guys remember this in the homework help page, that I did for like the previous worksheet. I'm not sure what it is anymore, but I think it's like around like 1.3 or 1.4 or something like that. I call that the difference quotient. Okay, so now it's an application for it. We're gonna use a limit of it soon. Okay, the denominator in here, delta x is the change in x. So delta is like change in English. And then the numerator in here is delta y. It is the change in y, okay? And then I give you guys like four scenarios in here. It's like step one, step two, step three, and step four, okay? So originally, like, uh, okay, I take these pictures from the textbook and it has like, some errors in here. So every time you see like the, the box in here, it means delta, okay? So let me try to fix them all. And hopefully you can see my writing after this. And delta, is, it has a symbol of like a triangle, okay? This is like Greek letter, okay? So we start with a curve, like this is your curve. And I'm gonna like pick on two points from that curves, just like from the previous example, right? And I try to get the slope by using the slope formula. And after that, I'm gonna try to shorten out the like distance between the two points, right? So let's say I keep this point fixed and I want to move this point closer. So then this point will become this point right here. It's coming closer, coming closer to the fixed point, right? And this one again is coming closer to the fixed point and at the end it is like together as like one point with the fixed point okay 
So coming closer, closer, and then they become one. Okay, that's like the concept in there. So then as you can see, the delta x and delta y are kind of like shrinking at the same time. Like you shrink like the points. At the end, delta x and delta y will become zero because you have like no gap between the two points. Okay. So definition of the slope. Okay, so we can uh, use the idea of the slope of the secant line to approximate the slope of the tangent line and using the limit. Okay. So this tells you that the tangent line can be um, counted, can be uh, ca calculated by using the limit of the slope of the secant line. Okay. And just like a heads up in here, some books, they use H instead of like delta X, but then they mean the same thing, okay? So don't be surprised if you see H instead of like delta X, okay? Let me get these out of the way first. Okay, for my example, uh, I mean, this is this has like no uh, example of yours because again, this number is, this example is not a number. So find a formula for the slope of the graph of F of x equal to negative x, 3x squared plus x and what is the slope at x equal I mean at the point um, negative 1 and negative 4 right so this one like usual we're gonna use this formula right here so I'm gonna do li limit at x I mean as h approaching to 0 because I already use a symbol with that's our x already so let's change the flavor and use the h in this example i'm gonna have to plug in x plus h right so okay let me write like another version for actually i do have another version of this right so here let me take these out okay let me tell you guys that i'm gonna focus on this one right here okay limit of h approaching to zero i'm gonna plug in x plus h in here and in here wherever see x right so I'm gonna get something like negative 3 in there and then x plus h I'll swear and then plus x plus h so this whole thing is just for f of x plus h okay and let me get out the arrow so that I have more space for pi and then minus this minus f of x this whole thing negative 3 x squared plus x and on the bottom I'm gonna have h okay and then I'm gonna rewrite limit in here h approaching to zero okay I'm gonna do a lot of like you know as I work in here because I don't have a lot of space in here but here let me try to show as much as I can so this in here if you were to like foil them out you're gonna get like x squared plus 2xh plus h squared right and if you have to add cal for the negative 3 in there, you have to multiply everything with negative 3. So this will become negative 6. And the last one, it will become negative 3. Okay, so I'm done with all this. And now I'm going to break these parentheses out. So I'm going to get something like x plus h. And now I'm going to distribute a negative in here and in here. So I'm having plus... 3x squared and then minus x okay so this cancel with that and then x cancel with x okay so i end up having one two three terms okay and what do they have in common they all have h in, in common right so let me factor out an h from each of them so this one if i take out an h i'm gonna get negative 6x this one, if I take out the H, I'm going to get negative 3H because it has like two H's, right? And then this one, if I take out an H, I'm going to get just one, okay? And I have the, the H from the bottom, cancel them. And now I'm going to plug in zero. Okay, this is my like ugly zero, so let me rewrite. Okay, now I'm going to plug in zero wherever I have H because this is H. This is talking about H, not X, right? So that means I'm going to plug in h right here because that's the only h I have left. So I have negative 6x minus 3 times 0, which is 0, and then plus 1. Okay? So then this is my, like, uh, formula for the slope. But then since they give me a point, right, and this one, it has, like, the x and y coordinate, right? So the slope of the graph at this point here, I'm going to plug in negative 1 for x. And I'm going to get negative 1 times negative, I mean negative 6 times negative 1 plus 1 equals to 7. 
this is my answer. Okay? So in the test, you're going to have something like this. So there's two things you do. First of all, you use, like, the different quotients. And then you plug in the value of 0 for h at the end. So you cancel the h's and ready. And second step, you're going to plug in the x part for the slope. Okay? To get, like, the value of the slope. And now, let's talk about the second objective of today, the derivative of a function. In the last example, in the last example, we use a limit process to derive another function, m equals to negative uh, 6x plus 1. So if you notice, this is like what I'm talking about, right? Like, this is it. And then that represents the slope of the graph of f at the point x and f, f x and f of x. And if you want to know what they are here, let me put them in, I don't know, like blue. So this is the point I'm talking about. Okay, so negative 1 here is x, and negative 4 in here is f of negative 1. Okay, and this derived functions is called the derivative of f of x, and we write it as f prime of x. Okay, so you must know, like, the English word for it is like Amazon prime. So f prime of x is the term, or like um, like the way we use for the derivative of f at x, okay? So let's make it official by putting like uh, it down as a definition for the derivative. The, the derivative of f of x is given by f prime of x, and then here's the formula that we used before, but in the last example I used h, but in this one I use like delta x. So again, you can like jungle with them, like um, like there's nothing wrong to use H or like Delta X, whatever like convenience for you, okay? I use H because I'm too lazy to write like Delta X, like two terms, but yeah, like either one will work. Okay, provided that uh, this limit exists, a function is differentiable at X if its derivative exists at X. And what do I mean by exists in here? Exists, it means that you're gonna have a value coming out from your limit, okay? So if you have like a negative or positive infinity, it means that your limit doesn't exist, okay? The process of finding the derivatives is called differentiation. So this is like more terms in like math, okay? So you have to get used to it because in the test, I'm gonna ask you guys to differentiate things and that means you guys have to tell me like the first derivative of the function, okay? So make sure you get used to it before the test come, okay? Other than f prime of x, we denote the derivative in various ways. So we have like one way to denote it, two way, three way, and four way. Okay. So in this class, usually, usually I'm gonna write dy over dx for implicit and derivatives, derivatives, which you're gonna learn in the future. This is also like another way that I refer to it because it's like short and it's cute. Because we usually use like f prime of x, right? And then I just want you to get f of x is just the same thing as y. That's why like y prime or f prime of x do the same thing, right? The last two, I barely use them, okay? But just um, be aware that they exist, okay? So in this one, I don't do like an uh, example, but this is like for your part to do. And let me guide you guys how to do this one, okay? So find the derivative of this function, right? So how can you do it? Well, just like what I did in the last page, make sure you apply this formula right here just like how I did it in here and then you do everything that you can to like ex expand the function simplify the function cancel out the h's after that you plug in zero for h and after that you plug in the x value and in your case the x value is four okay so make sure you plug it in like the formula that you get and then you box the answer just like what I did in here okay so if you need a reference make sure to look at page three okay and again, I put the graph in here just to, you know, like, just so you guys, it's just so you guys can check out your work in there. So in here, there's nothing to see, but technically in here, you're going to have like an, an, a falling like line, right? So it means that your slope in here, it should be something negative, okay? So if you end up with something positive, it means that uh, the answer is wrong, okay? And that is the time when you need to talk to me to figure out like um, what you understand and what you don't understand, okay? And then let's talk about the last page. Okay, differentiability and continuity. Know that every function is differentiable. Okay, so this one is like a big idea that people like, you know, like the 
like a lot of lots of mathematic meta mathematicians english okay they uh, came out with this big conclusion in there so every function is differentiable okay um if a function f is differentiable at x equal to c then it's continuous okay so if you have differentiable you're gonna have continuity but not the other way around okay so in here differentiable means continuity but continuities it doesn't mean differentiable at all okay and i'm gonna show you why okay so say we're gonna have like force and errors in here let's talk about the first picture in here and again like th these pictures coming out from the textbook so every time you see the box in this page it means like negative okay like just for you know like tick marks but i don't know like it has some like glitches in the book that's why it shows like boxes but yeah anyways so here's a function for the curve like we have the graph of the function right and add the value of x equal to zero in there if you were to draw the the graph if you can like see the like the bold um great line for the slope in here let me try to trace it this is the graph at x equal to zero okay it's a vertical tangent line okay so i have to say this it is still like you know like like in this case your tension is not going to be like a, a y equal to, to something form it's a vertical tension line so it's going to have the form of like x equal to zero and in here you're going to get something like x um like the the limit in here would be like you know like infinity plus positive or negative infinity okay but it's still continuous right it's differentiable it's still continuous okay and then for the second case in here this one okay this one is a bad glitch this one is actually like, you know, like, uh, wait, let me think about this. What is this one, actually? Okay, I know that this one is the absolute value. This one has it already, and this one, what is this one? I have to look it up. But technically, like, it doesn't matter, like, what the function is. Okay, don't mind it at all. We have two pieces, right? And as you can see right away, this function is not continuous, right? Um, why is that so? Because we have like two strings, okay? And I know that some of you guys may ask me, well, it has the x on the bottom, right? So x in here, it means that it cannot be zero on the bottom. And in here, the only place that this function is not continuous is at zero, right? And since zero is not in the domain, well, we don't have to care about it, right? Like, so in this case, it's still continuous, right? Even though we have a discontinuity, we still have a continuous function, okay? So this one, continuous, check. This one, continuous, check. Because x um, equal to zero, again, it's not in the domain, okay? So this is like not in, okay? Let me use the word in English instead. So in domain, not in the domain of that, uh, f, or like the function in here, okay? So then the third scenario, we have a function again, and then in here we have a cusp, right? Like, how to say a cusp? Uh, a cusp is mean that like at the x equal to zero, you're gonna have like a, like, it's gonna be differentiable, it's, it's still continuous, right? It doesn't like, you know, cut off, like it's still continuous, but in this case, it's not gonna be differentiable um let's see okay let me okay i come up with this notation how about this so check mark for continuous and let's say i'm gonna do like ping check mark before like differentiable so that you can tell like which one is like continuous and which one is differentiable okay so this one is not differentiable because we have a vertical tension line meaning we're gonna have the limit equals to either a positive infinity or negative infinity okay Second case is not differentiable at x equal to zero. Why? Because we're gonna have like two limits when x approaching to zero, right? On the right hand side we have like positive one, but on the left hand side we have negative one. And then the limits of each side they don't match. So then in this case it's not gonna be differentiable. Okay? And the third scenario is still continuous, but unfortunately this one in here is not gonna be differentiable because we have a cuss in here, okay? So what does a cusp does? It's gonna do the same thing as the first picture in here. You're gonna, it's gonna give you like a vertical tangent line. 
And since it's a vertical tension line, it's gonna look like, you know, like x equal to zero. And hence, you're gonna have the limit of, you know, positive infinity or negative infinity. If you want to test it out, yeah, you can do it. Um, and then, this is not like differentiable. And the last case also, um, this is like a node. What does it mean by a node, right? It's like, you know, like it's changing the direction at this point. So like everything is smoothly to here, but then at zero, it makes like a sharp turn, right? And hence in here, it makes a node. And then the tension line for this one at zero is also like a dashed line at zero. And because it's a vertical line, again, you're gonna end up with like, you know, like positive or negative um, infinity as the limit. So in this case also, it's not differentiable, but it is indeed continuous, right? Okay, so all four cases in here, it tells you that just because it's continuous, it doesn't mean that it's differentiable, okay? So this is something I'm gonna test you on, okay? And then to answer the question, if the function is continuous at x equal to c, is it true that f is always differentiable at x equal to c? Well, I can't like give you the hint for this one already. The answer is no, right? So let me put no. We could have a vertical tension across our node so here we can have like three cases we could or like we can have a vertical tangent so let me put like vertical tangent that's one bad case of you know like not being differentiable or we can have like a cusp here let me continue in here in here where things just got like you know like sharply turned or we can have like a node in here. Again, like thing is smooth, but then changing its direction. So then in either of like um, these cases in here, or even a, a jump, right? Like a discontinuity of a jump. In either of the four cases in here, they're all continuous in their own domain, but then none of them are differentiable, unfortunately, okay? So just remember this fact, differentiable, it means continuous but not the other way around, okay? If you have like a continuous function, it doesn't, like it's not for sure that you're gonna have a differentiable function, okay? And that's about it for today. Thank you for your listening. Take care and have a great day. Bye-bye.